Aloha and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ella and I help you retrain your brain. I post videos every Sunday about how you can turn your rock bottom moments into your breakthrough. So if you don't want to miss any upcoming content, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell down below. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm a lot more active day to day and love interacting with you guys one on one. So today's video is going to be part two of 10 things I did and continue to do to turn my rock bottom into my breakthrough and just ultimately retrain my brain. If you have not seen the first part, I'm going to link it right up here. So make sure you go check that out first. So let's get right into the number six thing I did to retrain my brain and that was a music cleanse. So a major thing that I noticed about myself was because my mood baseline, the mood that I had when I just got out of bed in the morning was so low that I actually became hypersensitive to things that were sad. But because I felt sad all the time anyways, I still gravitated towards these sad things because I felt like I needed to find alignment. I needed to align my internal sad world with my external world. And that's why I needed to do a music cleanse so I could revert that to align a positive internal world with a positive external world. I'm sure you guys understand what I mean by that. So like, have you ever felt a certain way and maybe you weren't conscious of it, but a song would come on the radio or a show would come on TV or somebody would put something on Netflix and you say, I'm just not in the mood for that right now, right? But that's because your internal feeling, whatever that is, is not in alignment with whatever you are consuming in your environment. So we always want to try and find comfort and alignment. So eventually I realized that this was happening and the sad music I was gravitating towards was just making me even sadder and even more depressed and really just decreasing my mood baseline even lower. So even though I did not want to be out of alignment, so to speak, I more badly wanted to just have a good life. And even though I knew that was going to be hard, I thought to myself, if I actually could change things to have a good life, wouldn't that be worth it? And my answer was yes. So I needed to start making some adjustments. And one of that was to completely cleanse from all the negative music I was listening to. And not just negative music, I felt like I just needed to do a detox. I wanted to get rid of as much stimulation as I had in my external world to start resetting my mood baseline, resetting my thoughts, and just resetting the way I felt about living. Think of it like a reverse elimination diet. So maybe you cut everything out of your diet and then one by one, you slowly start bringing bread in, you slowly start bringing in dairy, you slowly start bringing in whatever. Um, that's kind of what I did with media. I actually found it to be so, so helpful. I don't think I realized how much power I was giving to my environment simply by listening to things that were sad. And now that my mood baseline is brought back up, when I do listen to the same sad music, say it comes on the radio or somebody watches a sad movie with me, then I'm not as deeply affected. Now the seventh thing I started doing to retrain my brain is I started doing things simply because I didn't want to do them. <laughs> now, this probably sounds counterintuitive, but I'm telling you, it really, really helps you become brave and make decisions that you normally wouldn't make out of fear. So anyways, what I started doing is, as long as I was taking the proper precautions and these things were, you know, legal and good, um, let's not get too, you know, out of hand with this rule, then, I would start doing things and just being brave in the face of a challenge. This tip really helps me be so much more open-minded. It could be as simple as I don't like sushi or I don't want to go to that restaurant. That's your cue to go have sushi, try it out, have an open mind, go to that restaurant. Or maybe it's, oh, I do not want to go skydiving. Again, that is your cue to maybe try it out. I know for me, that is something that is unfortunately now on my bucket list because I do not want to go skydiving, but that means I have to go do it. So <laughs> um, if the 
opportunity comes up, then I will go skydiving. And I'll make sure I will tell you guys when that happens. So the next time you don't want to do something, use that as your cue to actually engage in the activity. Maybe you'll try it out and that thing that you originally didn't want to do actually made you super happy and you love doing it now. Or alternatively, maybe you didn't like it and hey, you did it once now, now you know you never want to do it again. So the eighth thing that I did and continue to do to retrain my brain into my rock bottom into my breakthrough is to schedule free time into my day. See, it takes a lot of energy to bring your mood baseline up and just learn to create meaning in your life. So if you want to take the time to do that, you actually have to have the time to do that. In the past, I really never gave myself time to do that and it worked for a little while, but I eventually burnt out. If you guys know me at all or watch any of my content, then you know I love making lists. Um, I make lists for everything, it helps me stay productive, but I encountered a problem when I started filling up my day and making lists to fill every single time gap throughout the day. I did not have any free time and sometimes that actually meant me getting less sleep. That's when I realized I needed to actually give myself time to recharge if I want to be productive in the long run. So now every single day, I make sure I have a little bit of time to do nothing. Either I will choose to do something fun like a hobby, something that will help relax me or de-stress, or maybe I find in that moment that I actually have enough juice in me to continue working and that's what I end up doing. And I actually started noticing that doing this helped me sleep a lot better. Before, for pretty much my whole life, I was the type of person to, you know, think every single thought in the book right before going to sleep and I wouldn't get to sleep till like 2 or 3 a.m. and it was just horrible. Um, well now that I actually leave space in my day to not be stimulated by any ideas in my external world, I'm able to think all the thoughts that I would normally have right before bed but during the day. So I think I'm creative and then when it comes time to go to sleep, my brain isn't saying, oh my gosh, this is the first time we're not being stimulated. Let's think, think, think as much as we can. I'm actually just able to relax and go to sleep. So the ninth thing that I have been doing to retrain my brain is expecting negativity in my life. If you guys have watched the other video in this series, then you know I used to try incredibly hard to avoid bad things from happening in my life. But I learned that I don't have control over everything, life is full of ups and downs, and whenever I make a personal decision, somebody is always gonna have something negative to say about it, even if I think it is a good decision. I always like to think of that quote by Marilyn Monroe that goes, you could be the ripest, juiciest peach in the world, but somewhere somebody out there is not gonna like peaches. So now I expect that even if I think I am making the best decision, there is gonna be at least one person that completely disagrees with me and will have something negative to say. I now expect negativity in my life the exact same way I expect the sun to rise every single morning, just part of life. And as soon as I adopted that mindset, I became so much braver to do things that I really, really wanted to do, but originally was scared to do, like make a website and this YouTube channel. Now, the 10th and possibly the most important thing I have been doing to retrain my brain and turn my rock bottom into my breakthrough was believing that I did not have a problem. Now, my problem was not that I didn't fully believe in myself, because to an extent I did, but a main problem I had was that I believed other things about myself that were actually holding me back. So in order to start moving forward and be happy in life, I had to unbelieve the things that were holding me back. That meant I had to unbelieve that I was depressed and unbelieve that I was stupid because of my brain injury. And it's actually funny because when I look back 
at my rehabilitation period after my brain injury and if you don't know anything about that you can click this video right here that happened 12 years ago and there was no social media not like we have today brain injury awareness just didn't really seem to be like a, a popular or mainstream thing nobody really knew about concussions or strokes the way we do now and there was no doctors or anybody really informing me so that I thoroughly understood the gravity of the situation. Nobody said, hey, you know what, you're going to have things like neuro fatigue. You are going to maybe experience some um, setbacks for the rest of your life now because your brain has been injured. And although I felt certain changes in my body over the years and certain changes in my brain, nobody validated those beliefs. And in hindsight, that was a blessing in disguise because I rehabilitated thinking there was nothing wrong with me. Thinking that, oh, you know, I was just an injury, I got hurt, whatever, let's, let's get back into things. I literally had no idea the gravity of the situation. And since I didn't think I had a problem, I didn't act like I did. It's really like the power of association. Have you ever seen a car for the first time and then all of a sudden you see the car everywhere? Or you try new food and then all of a sudden you see that particular food item on every single menu you go to in the restaurant. Well, that's not because it all of a sudden becomes popular. It's because now you recognize that food item or you recognize whatever it is and you can actually pick it out when it's around you. So the same went for, you know, feeling depressed or feeling stupid because of my brain injury or things like neuro fatigue. You know, I only learned about neuro fatigue um, a year and a half ago and after I was told about it or learned about it, I started noticing it happening with me. Oh yeah, like you connect the dots in hindsight, right? But before that, before when I did not know what neuro fatigue was, I didn't think it was happening to me, right? Because I didn't know about it. Um, and I was able to figure out ways to adapt to my new brain and my new self instead of getting down on myself because I was having these permanent or semi-permanent things happening to me. It was the exact same way with depression. I honestly thought for a long time that there was something seriously wrong with me and I needed to be in a mental institution. I needed medication or I was just like... I, a horrible excuse for a human being. That is really what I thought. And I didn't realize till later that those were just self-fulfilling prophecies. Um, as soon as I stopped believing that I had any sort of problem, I started rehabilitating and becoming more mentally resilient. And I really, really, really think that is the number one thing to actually improve your mental health is not believing that you have a problem. You have to unbelieve the things that hold you back in life. So if you guys found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe, and share it with one friend. As always, I hope you have an awesome day, and don't forget to make this the year of you. Bye!